Okay, so welcome back everybody. Today we're going to study about the Black Aeroplane. The Black Aeroplane was written by, who can say who, was, who it was written by? I'm just flipping through pages to find the name. I forgot the name, but that's fine. It's quite natural. It, it was written by Frederick Fawcett. And the, sorry, somebody was saying something and I said it before that person. I'm really sorry. Sir Frederick Fawcett. Yes. Thank you for that. Sir Frederick Fawcett was the author who wrote this um, a fiction. And um, when we read the story, it sounds so real, like something that happened, um, um, you know, in real life. And that's how he narrated it. Um, I even looked it up if this was a true incident, but there were no, I couldn't find any information that suggested that it was a real life incident. Uh, but I think it, it is a story that could be related by many um, pilots. Um, okay, so the story happens, um, the story starts with the pilot uh, flying from Paris to England. And he's flying on an old Dakota. So this would be an old Dakota. So this is the picture I could get of an old Dakota. So he's flying in an old Dakota. So this old Dakota has two, um, um, it had two um, fuel tanks. It had two fuel tanks. It has two fuel tanks. So, I, you know, the way I pictured the Dakota airplane, I thought it would be really small. But when I looked at the picture on Google, I saw this was a huge airplane that can accommodate a lot of passengers. So he was flying this plane from Paris to uh, London, where his home is. And um, it was midnight when he started traveling. So the basic idea for him was he, he wanted to reach his home for breakfast. Um, so I mentioned in the last class, it's such a good feeling to go back home, especially when you're away from home. You don't know the value of something when uh, you have it. You understand the value of something when you lose it. Um, it could be wrong. It could be uh, some, some of you might not agree with me, uh, but it can be related to most of the situations. Um, uh, for example, um, um, for example, what, what example can I give you? Okay. Um, maybe, um, I don't know, having a mobile phone and when you lose it, yeah, you feel that, you know, oh, that was better, even though this mobile phone that you had was a basic one, you know. So it's just that homesickness that our pilot or our protagonist had. He wanted to get home to his wife and his children so he could have breakfast with them. And he starts flying. And um, as he was over uh, Paris, he informs uh, the control room, Paris control room. He calls them up and through radio. And he informs them that he's flying uh, over them. And um, the Paris control room tells him to, Paris control room tells him to um, turn 12 degrees to his west which was the correct direction to reach London. So when you went, see, it's very different from road transportation. When, you, when, when we're tra traveling on road, we have a lot of signposts that can help us guide to our correct destination. But in terms of airplanes flying, you, you have a lot of instruments and you have to refer to those instruments to reach your destination. And also some, also some help from the control room. So our pilot asked help from the control room and they directed him to London. And he was, um, and he was um, almost 150 kilometers um, past Paris when he encountered a huge cloud um, in front of him. So this is Paris city. Uh, so you can see the Eiffel Tower. It's one of the most uh, iconic buildings in um, Paris. And Paris is considered as one of the most romantic cities in the world. It's also a very beautiful city, especially during night. Uh, most cities are beautiful during night. Um, so you can see how beautiful this is. Uh, this is a picture taken by someone uh, through a window from an airplane. So he was passed. Um, 
uh, Paris, about 150 kilometers uh, away from Paris, when he encountered a huge uh, storm uh, or a huge cloud um, that was ahead of him. So at that moment, he thought, you know, the right thing for me to do would be go back home. But he didn't want to go back home for an obvious, obvious reason because he wanted to be with his family. He so longed to be with his family that he took that risk to go through the clouds. And one problem, other problem, other challenge that he had was he did not have enough fuel to go over the cloud or around the cloud. He had to go through the cloud because he was running on limited fuel. And, um, and, and on top of that, his desire to be with his family driven, drove him to go through the cloud. And as soon as he got into the cloud, he understood that, um, you know, um, he understood that he made a big mistake because all the instruments that helped him to stay in, in correct, uh, that helped him to, that helped him guide to his current destination phase. For example, his compass, radio, everything started to malfunction. The radio stopped working. Uh, the compass started going round and round and round. And he was totally confused and scared and what to do, you know. He was lost and he was running on limited fuel. And um, um, being very, very scared uh, and confused, uh, he saw something very, very um, mind-blowing or more than mind-blowing, I could say unexpected. He saw some a black aeroplane flying near to him, and he looked at the aeroplane and he was relieved because there was somebody to um, at least be with him in that difficult situation. Um, I gave you uh, an, uh, a reference uh, from in last class about you know when you are the only person in a situation you feel alienated um, or you feel so terrible, but when you have a friend. For example, I gave you a very bad example, like I gave you an example, if you fail in an exam, that's not a good example, I admit, I'm really sorry, I couldn't come up with, come up with anything creative. Suppose you fail in an exam, um, you feel bad. If you're the only one failing, you feel bad. But if, you, if there is somebody with you who has failed in the exam, you feel, uh, there's somebody to share that, you know, um, share that um, emotion with. So that's actually a relief. Um, but I don't know how many girls can relate to this because I have, uh, like when I was in school, um, the, all my girlfriends, not my girlfriends, my friends who were girls, um, you know, uh, when they failed in, in, in exams, they used to uh, have such a hard time. But for boys, it was very easy because we all we needed were a company. If we had a company, we were happy. So. That's how this works. So when the pilot saw another plane near him, he was he 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 had a relief, and it was momentary. And then um, the pilot on the other a black plane waved to him and maybe gave him some signal to uh, tell him follow me. So this guy happily followed uh, the other black plane, and um, um, he flew for some while and. Um, followed him for some time. And finally, um, now um, it came to a moment when he was very, very worried about his uh, fuel, because like I mentioned, it was very, very limited. And all of a sudden, uh, this black aeroplane led him out of the cloud and he saw um, two lights stretching down the plane and that was um, the runway. And just as he landed, he looked, he took a look back to the black aeroplane that helped him reach this airport. Um, he did not even know which airport he was in. He was just happy to be in an airport safe and away from all the thunderstorm and clouds. So um, um, this guy um, quickly got out of his plane and ran to the control room to ask the um, uh, the people, the personnel there, uh, asking them 
uh, who the other plane was because he wanted to thank him because this person might have saved his life. He might not have, um, you know, um, he might not have, um, you know, saved himself uh, if he was alone in that situation. So this particular person, that black aeroplane helped him. So he left his airplane there without anybody looking after it. And he ran to the control room to ask the lady there who the man was. But um, to his surprise, um, she replied there was nobody um, flying um, during that night. And that's actually a mystery and a miracle. That's two things that is, that's associated with this particular story uh, theme. I mean, a miracle and mystery. Uh, there are a lot of things in life that you cannot find answer to, but all you can be is be grateful about it. So um, that's the story and that's the theme that's discussed in this story. Um, so this is again what we discussed in the last class. Um, so you can, um, I'll be sharing this in the Google Classroom. You can download this and you can look it up and take notes. Um, from here, this is again a summary of the story. Um, maybe you can read it and understand yourself. Um, so I'm going to stop share and I'm going to add that to our YouTube so you can go back and refer to it whenever you want. Okay, so this is time for, does anyone have any question regarding this chapter? Please feel free to ask. I'd be happy awesome. to answer. Okay, great. Okay, so moving on to our next slide, what we're going to do. So this is something that I wanted to um, uh, brief you in last class. Um, that is how to conduct yourself in group discussion. So uh, last class, when you're part of the group discussion, uh, you know, it can be a little difficult for you to discuss, engage in discussion uh, with your friends um, because we're in, um, a completely different platform. Um, so um, it can be difficult for you. So um, what you can do is, you know, uh, um, when you're in that group discussion, I know most of you listen very well, but very few add their share or collaborate to the team to find the question and answers. So ningal ningal that opinions and suggestions are open to paraya when you are in group discussion. So it's 7.37. I'm going to assign you to um, groups. And um, you know, page number 30, one second, sorry. Sorry, 40, 40. Turn to page number 40. Are there not five questions in this? Thinking about the text, five questions in this. These five questions to discuss here. I'm going to give you 15 minutes for doing that. And is in the code of the name. Our five questions are discussing how many math or 15 minutes are there. Turn to page number 42 um, in your textbook. Um, I know the first two questions. After they read the second story, students should be asked for their ideas about the plan. Phantom claim. Phantom in the part is unidentified, okay, mystical. Was it really there or did the pilot imagine it? Actually, here is the question. We have to ask the question. A uh, pilot, Sherikim, Anganuru plane in the help of Kude Arno land is Chesa, Ado Pulika and imagine Chesa Arno Ikai. It's actually a mystery. Don't know whether so Ningal Ningal the ideas and the Ningal share your group. Okay? Any questions? No, sir. Uh, 